So it's been an absolute pleasure to be here at the uh, Endometriosis Foundation of America medical meeting on endometriosis this year. Uh, I just had the opportunity to address the audience with regards to the role of robotics in gynecology, sort of a pro and con critique of what robotics may mean for endometriosis surgery. And it's really interesting because robotic surgery in its purest form is a very transformative piece of technology that has really been a game changer in terms of tools that we have in middle invasive surgery. It gives us some increased articulation, there's ergonomics, there's three-dimensional visualization, uh, motion scaling, tremor filtration, a lot of assets that exist on a robotics platform that have really the potential to impact what it is that we do in minimally invasive surgery. Now what's interesting is the whole range of gynecologic surgery has really been touched by robotics. And what's really pertinent with today's discussion is what is that role with regards to endometriosis surgery, to reproductive surgery, uh, to endometriosis resection. Uh, clearly the discussion today has centered around the difficulty of managing this disease surgically, uh, the feeling of sort of helplessness on the surgeon's part of not being able to adequately resect everything. And I think that's really why there's been a lot of talk and interest in using robotic surgery for management of endometriosis. But what's interesting about that whole concept has been the controversy that really surrounds robotics nowadays. And I really truly believe that the controversy really has nothing to do with the tool itself, uh, but really relies more on who's utilizing the tool and, and how it's being studied in terms of evaluated and making sure we have the proper information to make those decisions. Um, I call it the cart before the horse phenomenon. And uh, we certainly talked about several examples today, one of which was you need to know your anatomy. You need to have some technical skills, technical prowess, married together with your knowledge of anatomy to be able to utilize a technology like robotics to treat endometriosis surgery. I think often there's this misunderstanding that robotics will compensate for that lack of knowledge, but it doesn't. So you need to know that. Uh, you need to respect learning curves. Uh, clearly, there is a learning curve with any tool that we utilize, um, and it's definitely pertinent with robotics. Um, in some studies, it's about 90 to 100 cases before people transcend the first phase of a learning curve. And with that, we clearly recognize that volume impacts learning curve. And there are a lot of studies out there in the laparoscopic literature that support the fact that high volume surgeons are typically the ones that manage the more complex surgical cases. And with that, end up with lower conversion rates from laparoscopy to laparotomy, um, shorter hospital stays, less post-operative complications, and that's very important to keep in mind when we talk about implementing a technology like robotics. Uh, we really need to make sure we have uh, the proper studies because we are at an intersection right now uh, with technology and with pathology, which in this case is endometriosis. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, we have the proper studies in place because there are articles coming out today, like a recent JAMA article that addressed the role of robotics with hysterectomy. Uh, in the benign hysterectomy arena, it's showing not a significant difference in terms of lowering complication rates, but definitely is increasing surgical cost. And those are important things to understand if we want to utilize robotics and endometriosis, if the data support that. We need to understand those things. Uh, we need to make sure that um, we are not commercializing robotics in a way that is not appropriate. Uh, we need to, again, keep tabs on what the complication rates are. Uh, clearly. Wall Street Journal, New York Times uh, has expressed an interest in this. Um, there are uh, attor attorneys out there that are uh, interested in what are the complication rates with robotics. Uh, even the FDA now is looking at the role of robotics, just as it did the role of transvaginal mesh for public reconstructive surgery. So we really are at a crossroads where we have to be very careful how we shepherd in this technology. But with that being said, I really do believe that this technology will continue to evolve that the future is going to be bright for the role of robotics in endometriosis management. Certainly, simulation is fast and growing, which is an important piece of the puzzle for training surgeons to adequately manage endometriosis cases. Uh, secondly, uh, there are technologies that are constantly evolving related to visualization of the disease. Uh, throughout the day-to-day -day at the Endometriosis Foundation of America meeting, there's been talk of not being able to see all the disease when, when surgeons go in there to surgically resect. Uh, but there are tools on the horizon that may help us do that that exist on a robotics platform. So really at the end of the day, I think we just have to be responsible individuals as we shepherd in this new technology. Um, to me, a lot of the controversy 
exists not with the technology, but really with how the utilizers or the users are shepherding this into the clinical arena.